Hi, I'm Lisa Schulman. Uh, I'm a neurologist at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. And I wrote the book, Before and After Loss, A Neurologist's Perspective on Loss, Grief, and Our Brain, after my own experience of loss. What really motivated me to write the book was that even though, as a neurologist, I counsel people who are having very serious difficulties in life, serious diagnoses, sometimes end-of-life issues, serious disability, uh, I thought, for goodness sake, I probably know enough about uh, loss and how to manage through loss that when I faced my own difficulties, when my husband passed away about 10 years ago, I thought, well, I'm probably going to do just fine. Wrong, totally wrong, because you never know what it's like to be in somebody's shoes until you face it. And when I was facing my own difficulties, it seemed like I'd probably never get out of it, like quicksand. And my whole life seemed turned over, and how I would ever get back on any track at all seemed very elusive. So, you know, I really wrote the book because I thought uh, my knowledge of understanding how the brain is affected by uh, emotional trauma and by loss uh, would help people to see that their experience is not as mysterious as it seems. Uh, during my own research, what I discovered was that uh, the brain is behaving just the way it's hardwired to do. And many of us feel in the midst of that experience, like, for goodness sake, our behavior is weird. Uh, maybe we're going crazy. Uh, our mind doesn't seem to be working the way it ever did before. Our memory doesn't seem as good as it used to be, perhaps. Our organizational skills are suffering. But it turns out that this is all predictable because from the brain's perspective, uh, believe it or not, a serious emotional trauma, like the loss of a loved one, or a new diagnosis, or any other serious emotional trauma, is a threat to our very survival. And therefore, these primitive hardwired mechanisms kick in in order to help us get through it and survive. Unfortunately, those mechanisms, as a result of evolution, uh, cause us to behave in ways that can sometimes be misinterpreted and can be kind of scary. So uh, understanding brain function uh, tells us that the important next step is to try to reconnect the emotional disturbance of loss with our cognitive memory. You have to calm the fear center in the brain and you have to elevate and strengthen the seat of reasoning and judgment in the brain. We can do that by uh, journaling. We can do that by uh, speaking to a wise counselor uh, and helping, helping us resurface memories that are suppressed so far that we can no longer access them or retrieve them. We need to unearth those memories to process them and consolidate them in memory so that they don't sit around and roil around in the background causing us to have all sorts of strange dreams and even flashbacks in our life when we're exposed to triggers. This is the road to healing, and it's a long story. For most of us, healing isn't really sufficient. When you've gone through so much difficulty, what you really want to achieve is post-traumatic growth. What we have learned from going through hard times is something we can apply in our life in many ways. In my own life as a physician, I find that I have these experiences make me a better physician, somebody who can communicate during difficult times in a way I never could before. And that, what is that? That is growth. So uh, I'm thinking about all of you. I know how difficult times can be. 
And I hope that these words can help you move forward.